which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Gentle, Donald. Slowly, okay. That's good. How much you want for your pot? Five hundred. Six hundred. Introducing Cozone.com, the place to find computer help and buy what's right for you. Hey. Hey yourself. Cozone.com, we can help. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if it do evil in my sight that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Now therefore go to, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. And they said, There is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, and we will every one do the imagination of his evil heart. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Ask ye now among the heathen, Who hath heard such things? The virgin of Israel hath done a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon which cometh from the rock of the field, or shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place be forsaken? Because my people hath forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths in a way not cast up, to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing. Everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. Introducing the limited edition God Bless the USA Bible, inspired by Lee Greenwood's hit song and the most recognized patriotic anthem in America, God Bless the USA. The God Bless the USA large print leather-bound King James Bible also contains America's founding documents, the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance, along with a handwritten chorus to Lee Greenwood song, God Bless the USA. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Pray, get educated, get motivated, and stand with me and the legions of Americans asking God to bless our great nation, to bring our great nation back, and to make America great again. I'm proud to partner with Lee in this offering. He's a very special man, both as a talent, but maybe even more so as a human being. He's very, very special. And I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now and help spread our Christian values with others. There you have it. Let's make America pray again. God bless you and God bless the USA. forward to next year when the White House will ring with joy the season once again and there'll be an Easter egg roll, God willing. May God bless you all. May God protect our troops and take care of the Easter Bunny.
Thank you all very, very much. Easter, it's a Christian holiday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but it's represented by a giant rabbit with a basket full of colorful eggs. Knowing this, you might ask yourself, what does a rabbit and colorful eggs have to do with Jesus Christ? To understand this, we must go back to the origin of Easter, and it begins with a pagan goddess named Ostara. Despite being a significant Christian holiday, Easter's origins are deeply pagan. From the traditions to the food to even the name of the day, Easter is steeped in paganism. The name Easter comes from Ostara, also known as Istra in the Anglo-Saxon form. She is the Germanic pagan goddess of spring and fertility. The story of Ostara tells of her transforming a bird into a rabbit in spring. The rabbit maintained its bird ability to lay eggs, but these eggs were not ordinary. They were special because they were naturally colorful. The festival of Ostara, or the festival of Istre, was held each spring to celebrate the goddess Ostara and the season of spring and all the new life spring brings from plants that have been dormant for winter to the birth of new life throughout the animal kingdom. The goddess's name, Istre, eventually became Easter, and on the day of the festival, this magical rabbit would lay its colorful eggs for children. In Germany and English-speaking countries, Easter comes from the Germanic goddess Ostara. But interestingly, in many other European countries, the name for the Easter holiday derives from the Jewish festival of Passover, as the arrest and execution of Jesus was said to have occurred during the Jewish observance of Passover. For instance, in Greece, the feast is called Pascha. In Italian, it's Pasqua, and in French, it's Bach. So naturally, given the close proximity of Passover with Jesus' execution and the symbolism of the festival of Ostara, it was perfect for celebrating the resurrection of Jesus at this time of the year. But Easter's origin and namesake aren't the only aspects of the holiday which are steeped in paganism. The traditions of the holiday are also uniquely pagan. Eggs are used to represent fertility and birth in certain pagan traditions. In the spring season, pagans would decorate eggs with different colors to celebrate the rebirth of the spring season and give them to family and friends as gifts. There is also the German legend of Osterhasa, which tells of the Easter hare who laid brightly colored Easter eggs in a nest for good children to find. And there's the German tradition of Osterbrunnen, a custom of elaborately decorating public wells and fountains with lush greenery and Easter decorations. Villagers wanted to give thanks for the gift of water while celebrating Easter at the time and began holding competitions to see which village could decorate theirs the best. Eating ham on Easter is another pagan tradition. In pagan lore, a man named Tammuz was killed by a wild pig. To mourn him, villagers abstained from eating meat for 40 days. Then every year on the first Sunday after the first full moon, Following the spring equinox, the pagans celebrated by eating a pig in honor of Tammuz, which is another pagan connection to the day Easter is celebrated. Easter day changes from year to year because it falls on the Sunday after the first full moon in April. This is also known as a pink moon, and pagan holidays are all based on moon cycles. Baked breads, egg loaves, and boiled colored stained eggs placed in decorative crown-shaped braided breads are also traditions of pagans who baked these goods at winter's end and tiny sweet cakes decorated with a cross were served at the annual spring festival for the goddess Ostara. Christians adapted these cakes as hot cross buns and used it to represent the cross on which Christ died. The traditional Christian season of Lent, the 40-day period during which you make a sacrifice by giving up your favorite food or creature comforts, may have its roots in the ancient pagan wheel of the year and passing of the winter into spring. As winter neared its end, it wasn't uncommon for people to run out of food stores and sometimes needed to fast or cut out certain items to make it until springtime when food would be more available. While there are many widely celebrated holidays that originated from pagan traditions, I find Easter to be so unique in its paganism because of how blatant its origins are, I mean the name itself as after a pagan goddess. Today, Easter has become a huge commercial holiday as well as a religious event, and despite its prominence as a Christian holiday, its pagan traditions have remained. So for who you don't know me, I'm Melania Trump, and nice to meet you all. I will have a special book for you, Party Animals. Did you know about the book? No? So Kathy Lee Gifford wrote it a while back, and I really like that book because it shows that we are all different, but we are all the same. So here is the story. Everyone wants to be the Cadbury Bunny, because only he brings delicious Cadbury cream eggs, while others may keep trying. 
No bunny knows Easter better than Cadbury. Who is it? It's Troy. Yeah. Three, two, three, four, four, two, three, and... These men are pawns. I put a price of 20,000 dirham on their heads. Next, they will be hailed as the two messenger of God. They were just a couple of songwriters who came to Ishtar to break into show business. Easy, easy boy, easy boy. Easy boy. What the hell's the matter with him? Is he blind? Well, yeah, he is, but, but he's in perfect condition. So how do they wind up on everyone's hit list? Your life is in danger. Behave normally. We have a gun pointed at your back. No, don't put your hands up, you idiot. My little darling. My little darling. I can't believe these men may control the fate of the Middle East. Prime Minister Netanyahu said that the world is hung up on peace negotiations with the Palestinians and pointed to the Abraham Accords as the way to normalize relations with the Arab world. Speaking to CNN at the end of the U.S. Secretary of State's Blinken visit to the Middle East, Netanyahu said that after peace is achieved with the rest of the Arab world, we can circle back to seeking a workable peace with the Palestinians. ILTV Steve Leibovitch reports. When U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken visited Ramallah yesterday, he told PA leader Mahmoud Abbas of continued U.S. commitment to the peace process and the two-state solution. Prime Minister Netanyahu made clear that reaching an agreement with the Palestinians is not a top priority. Netanyahu said that while he was out of power, the security situation deteriorated and corrections need to be made. Ishtar, written and directed by Elaine May. <laughs> This is some of our best work. And I'm very glad that there are still so many young people in the world. <laughs> I want to welcome all of you here to the White House. We are sure glad you're here. Welcome. I hope everybody had a wonderful Easter. Hi, I'm David. I'm a volunteer at the White House. This is my seventh Easter egg roll. As part of the LGBT community, we were aware of President Obama's and the First Lady's 2009 stance on inclusiveness and specifically bringing in LGBT families. And this event is open to everybody. It doesn't matter if you are, what your economic background is. It doesn't matter uh, where you come from. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Everyone rolls the same on the self law. Who knows what we're going to be in 10 years? Will we have, you know, robots out here dancing? Will we have other things? The world is evolving so fast, and it'll be fun to see an event that has been around for so long evolve with it. I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with it. The commander of many armies, defender of Rome, your servant to the emperor. I have still a blood-soaked ground. All our jobs are glamorous, men. The guilty and the innocent, they both die by our blade. And today is no different. But who are we to judge? The pages of history are written in blood. Are you ready for the world to paint another? Yes, sir!
two hours late. I know. It's her fault. You got the money? Two grand. Hold up. Hallelujah. You're my savior, man. My own personal Jesus Christ. You get caught using that. Yeah, I know. This never happened. You don't exist. Right. Something wrong, man? You look a little whiter than usual. My computer, it... <laughs> you ever have that feeling where you're not sure if you're awake or still dreaming? Mm, all the time. It's called mescaline. It's the only way to fly. Hey, look, it just sounds to me like, you know, you need to unplug, man. You know, get some R&R? &R. Hey, what do you think, Deshore? Should we take him with us? Definitely. Uh, I can't. I have uh, work tomorrow. Come on. It'll be fun. I promise. Yeah. Sure. I'll go. I want to welcome you all the, to the 2009 White House Easter Egg Hunt. Yay! You'd think he was a head of state rather than just a head inside a bunny suit. The President of the United States and Mrs. Trump accompanied by the Easter Bunny. And to think that at times during the Bush administration, the bunny was none other than current press secretary Sean Spicer, who this year merely posed alongside the bunny while SNL's Melissa McCarthy portrayed him. All right, get out of here. Get out of here. Go. Briefing in his bunny suit. Just eat as much candy as you want, because this is probably our last Easter on Earth. <laughs> Asked what he thought of the SNL portrayal, Spicer dodged. I'm usually long and I'm fast asleep by the time that comes on. The president needed a little wake-up call. Oh, say, did you see? The first lady nudged the president during the national anthem. Oh, say, can you see Tweeted one viewer, is it just me or did he seem to have a problem finding his heart? The president whistled. The start of several Easter egg races, he signed hats and tossed them. Thank you. No. This one handily retrieved by its owner, while a girl writing cards to soldiers seemed thrilled to find herself next to the first lady, who rewarded her with a hug. But when Melania read a book called Party Animals, one audience member acted like one. She is more boring than I am. <laughs> At least she didn't try pulling the Easter rabbit's ears. The ears of a bunny have a funny way of getting around. Around the head of the gunnery sergeant who sang the national anthem. Around the head of the president. Wrap your head around this. It is wonderful to see all of you today. Welcome. This is one of the greatest White House traditions because it, it reminds us that this is the people's house. Our goal today is just to have fun. Uh, we want to focus on activity, healthy eating. We've got yoga, we've got dancing, we've got storytelling, we've got Easter egg decorating. Oh, we've got basketball, a little, a little soccer as well.
fine. I just uh, threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> Buckle up. It's very funny. <laughs> Welcome to the Warren. Something's up. Something. Oh, don't look at me. I'm invisible, remember? Oh, oh. Don't worry, Bunny. I bet she's a fairy fan. It's okay, little one. Pretty. Oh. You know what? I've got something for you. Here it is. Look at all the pretty teeth. There's little blood and gum on them. <laughs> <laughs> blood and gums? When was the last time you guys actually hung out with kids? We are very busy bringing joy to children. We don't have time <laughs> for children. Hmm. If one little kid can ruin Easter, then we're in worse shape than I thought. You want to paint some eggs? Yeah. Oh, okay. Come on then. <laughs> Rimsky Korsakov. That's a lot of eggs. Uh, how much time do we have? All right, troops. It's time to push back. That means eggs everywhere. Heaps of you in every high-rise farmhouse and trailer park. In tennis shoes and cereal bowls. Oh, there'll be bathtubs filled with my beautiful googies. Well, over 1,000 people gathered at a local church to kick off Easter weekend with a Texas-sized Easter egg hunt that included over 50,000 eggs. Fox 7's Marcus Officer was there and has that story. Five, four, three, two, one, go! It was a mad dash into a Texas-sized celebration of an Easter tradition. 50,000 eggs on the premises. I hope they'll all be gone by the time this is done. And they were. Thanks to the 1,000 plus that gathered at the Austin Oaks Church in Southwest Austin for the annual egg extravaganza. This has been a growing experience every year. Started with uh, just a small number and each year just gets larger. Hundreds of kids and even some parents armed with their buckets, bags and baskets wasted no time filling them up. We had a lot of fun watching all the kids get out in the middle and uh, hunt for Easter eggs. Watching them run around picking up eggs and chowing down on candy. Okay, that's a little strange. Nah, mate. 
That's adorable. There will be springtime on every continent. And I'm bringing hope with me. To Christmassy, mate. Paint them blue. What the? Oh, what's over there? <laughs> oh, that's a beauty. Now, all we're going to do is get him and his little mates through the tunnels to the top, and we'll have ourselves Easter. Last time, the rabbit was in Tricksland, where zillions of other rabbits offered him sweet, fruity tricks. Mmm, have a bowl. At last, sweet, delicious tricks. A fruity part of my complete breakfast. Wow, delicious, yummy, awesome, stupendous. Huh? Hey, rabbit, can I have some too? Silly kid, tricks are for rabbits. Tricks are for rabbits. Tricks are for kids. Tricks are for kids. Silly oh. rabbit. A rabbit can dream, can't he? Can of Simon eyes. Ralphie, what did Aunt Clary give you? Show everybody. I don't want to. Ralphie, show everybody what Aunt Clara gave you. <sighs> Aunt Clara had for years labored under the delusion that I was not only perpetually four years old, but also a girl. She just always gives you the nicest things, Ralphie. Oh, my. Oh, isn't that sweet? Ralph, go upstairs and try it on. I don't want to. Go upstairs right now and try on that present. She went to all that trouble to make it. Now, go on. While Ralphie is changing, I'm going to play Santa Claus. Thank you. Yes, very much. Very much. Ralphie, we're waiting. Oh, come on, Mom. Right now. Immediately, my feet began to sweat as those two fluffy little bunnies with the blue button eyes stared sappily up at me. Um, come down here so I can see you better. I just hoped that Flick would never spot him, as the word of this humiliation could easily make life at Warren and G. Harding School a veritable hell. Oh, isn't that cute? That is the most precious thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it, Atlantic City's skyline had a major makeover this week as the former Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino was blown up in a controlled demolition. There was even an auction to sell 10 seats for an implosion viewing party at another space with clear views of the former president's former casino. According to the mayor of Atlantic City, Marty Small, the road to get here was tedious. Trump opened the Plaza Hotel and Casino in 1984. It was one of three casinos in Atlantic City with the Trump name. Amidst great hoopla this week, Donald Trump is opening his $1 billion Taj Mahal Casino in Atlantic City. The other two were the Trump Taj Mahal, which is now the Hard Rock Cafe, and Trump Marina, now the Golden Nugget. Following several bankruptcies, lagging revenue, and rising competition from other resorts, Trump took the casinos public, which shifted the risk to stockholders. Many, many a small business uh, contractors, small family businesses went belly up when he did pay them. The crumbling and dilapidated Plaza Hotel and Casino eventually closed down in 2014, being bought out by billionaire investor Carl Icahn, who had supported Trump in the 2016 presidential campaign. 
The building was supposed to come down earlier, but faced many delays. There was an auction in December for the right to press the detonator, but it was cancelled after receiving a cease and desist letter from one of Icon's companies. For the record, the highest bid was $175,000. In its heyday, the Plaza Hotel and Casino was the entertainment hub of Atlantic City. It hosted all the Mike Tyson fights, as well as WrestleMania 4 and 5. Ultimately, the goal is to ease the guidelines and open things up to very large sections of our country as we near the end of our historic battle with the invisible enemy. We'll go on for a while, but we win. We win. I said earlier today that I hope we can do this by Easter. I think that would be a great thing for our country, and we're all working very hard to make that a reality. We'll be meeting with a lot of people to see if it can be done. Easter is a very special day for many reasons. For me, for a lot of a lot of our friends, that's a very special day. You know what? Sometimes what you leave out of a story is even more interesting than what you leave in. That happened when we were in Oxford, Maryland. Learned that the pride of that old town was one Robert Morris Jr., the financier of the American Revolution. Years ago, we used to go down to the county library and get a picture of a bird like that, but now we just use the internet. That's where I found this picture here. Now the caption said it was a shot of the Greek god Mercury handing a bag of loot to Robert Morris, the financier of the American Revolution. Well, that's just a tiny part of a much bigger picture called the apotheosis of Washington. Now apotheosis is a Greek word that means to make divine. In other words, this painting shows George Washington becoming a god. Now I never knew that happened. But there it is for all to see, painted under the most famous dome in the whole country, maybe the whole world, the United States Capitol. Now, the most interesting part of this particular heaven are the folks that live in it. Now, you'd expect to see Moses and Abraham and Ezekiel and that crowd hanging around, but not a single fella from the Bible's up there. Now, Minerva, the Roman goddess of crafts and wisdom, is shown delivering an electrical generator and batteries in a printing press to Benjamin Franklin, Samuel Morris, and Robert Fulton. And Neptune, the Roman sea god, and Venus, the goddess of love, are showing helping to lay the transatlantic telegraph cable. I bet you they were a big help. Now there's some other gods, but not a single prophet, apostle, or even a lower archangel in the whole four and a half thousand square feet. All I know is what I read on the internet, but you hear a lot of talk these days about the religious beliefs of our founding fathers. Now those boys may have been as devout as saints. We'll never know. One thing's for sure, you'd never tell by looking at Capitol Dome. Charles Paparella, WBOC News. Simply put, this country and this world benefit from your commitment to Jesuit principles, to being men. As a graduate of another great Jesuit institution, Xavier University, I have great affection for the value and purpose of a Jesuit education. President Trump, who attended Fordham, a Jesuit university, came face to face today with the first Jesuit pope. The rest is history. This is uh, Bernini, Bernini's canopy where the pope sits. Now, underneath uh, this, it's the representation of the Holy of Holies, blasphemously so. And in this representation, this would be uh, in the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant would sit. And uh, this is where uh, the Pope blasphemously portrays himself to be sitting there in the Holy of Holies. And in this next slide, number 19, you can see the close-up of the pedestals that are underneath this twisted column that are there uh, to represent uh, Solomon's temple. And this thing is huge. It's several stories high. I mean, this thing is huge. And there on, uh, on this pedestal, at the bottom of these twisted columns, in slide 20 here, we have the eight faces that are on the pedestals. And these eight faces are faces of women that are giving birth, women in childbirth. 
And I believe the obvious symbolism here, this is just like Pope Joan bringing forth her child. I believe that this symbolism represents the birth that will come and of the final one that's going to sit underneath this canopy. And all of this symbolism and all of this scripture, it tells us a consistent story.
He looks like a deranged Easter bunny. <laughs> Scarlet nights, I saw you. So cruelly, you kissed me. Your lips, a magic world. Your sky all hung with jewels. The killing moon will come too soon. Sometimes when this place gets kind of empty Twenty days The sound of their breath fades with the Six lights. hours Forty-two minutes I think about Twelve seconds The loveless fascination Under the Milky Nine. Way tonight Is when the world will end Now to Pope Francis celebrating his first Easter Mass at St. Peter's today in front of tens of thousands of faithful pilgrims. He greeted the crowd from the Pope Mobile, waving to the faithful, and there you see he even kissed a few babies. Top right. Top right. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Prime Minister, my lords and members of the House of Commons, I have known few greater honors than the opportunity to address the Mother of Parliaments at Westminster Hall. I am told that the last three speakers here have been the Pope, Her Majesty the Queen, and Nelson Mandela, which is either a very high bar or the beginning of a very funny joke. If we turn against each other based on divisions of race or religion, Come on, try getting it out. Ding, 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 bong. That's all, folks.
the name of the Lord, they will surely trust in Him. For the Lord never will forsake the one who is unearthly. Oh Lord, and seeking Him. Mm -hmm. Everybody on, seek Jesus in the morning. Seek Jesus in the noonday hour. Yeah.